In Module 8, we will, you will build on skills that you've developed in previous modules to be able to write confidence intervals. In particular, we'll look for confidence intervals of one variable proportions and one variable means. Possibly a good way to get started is to look at an example. We'll look at a one variable proportion problem. What's the proportion of blue colored M&M peanut candies? In an effort to find the answer, we might take a sample and in that sample calculate the proportion of blue M&Ms. In this case, we found 15 blue M&Ms out of 74 total. So the proportion in the sample, which we'll call P hat, is 15 over 74. This is a point estimate for the population mean. The, uh, the sample mean is seldom actually equal to the population mean, but we're hoping that it's close. In this problem, we'll look for a 90% confidence interval. And the idea there is to, to find an interval so that we're 90% confident that the population mean is within that interval. Of course, that also means that there's a 10% chance that the population mean is not in the interval. Here's a problem that you've worked in a previous chapter. Uh, find a C such that the probability that the Z value, so we're working with the standard normal curve, is between minus C and C. And the, the, that probability that Z is between those two numbers is 90%. I'm not going to review in this uh, overview how that was done, but here was the idea. We wanted 90% of the population to be between minus C and C in a standard normal distribution. That turns out to be that this C is going to be, need to be about 1.644854. If you've forgotten how to find that value, You'll need to relearn it because we'll use it often in this chapter. Now, under the right assumptions, the distribution of sample proportions will be normally distributed. There's the conditions that make that happen. And the mean of the sample proportions will be equal to the uh, probability of success, the, the proportion of the entire population, and the standard deviation, we'll sometimes refer to this as a standard error, is equal to the square root of p times q divided by the, the square root of p times q divided by n. Now put those two pieces of information together. Here in the standard normal distribution, we found out that c would need to be this amount so that 90% would be between a minus C and C. So within 1.64 something uh, standard deviations of the mean, there's going to be 90%. And we know what the standard deviation of a sample proportion is going to be. It's given here. And so therefore, 90% of the, of the P hats are within the margin of error equal to C times SE uh, of the mean. In other words, 90% of the P hats are in this interval. Now, reading that one little paragraph takes a little bit of time to kind of tack that together and get it to make sense because of these two other observations that we've made here. But here's what we've got. We end up knowing that within P plus ME, remember how ME was found, it was that C from up here times this standard error, uh, P plus ME and P minus ME within those two, two intervals is 90% of the population ends up between there. But here's the problem, the value of P and the value of Q are both unknown to us. The value of p hat is 15 over 74. That is known from the sample. Therefore, q hat will be 59 over 74, and we'll use those values to approximate 
this standard error. So here's those two pieces of information put together. Here's a standard normal distribution. 90% of the population will be within 1.64 standard deviations of the mean. And here's our distribution of sample proportions. Uh, and we happen to know that 90% of the population is between, if we knew what P was, between P plus ME and P minus ME. But our situation is that we end up with this P hat, a sample proportion. That P hat could end up anywhere along here. But 90, it's got a 90% chance of being between these two. So most of the time, it's going to, <clears throat> when, we, when we do a sample and find the P hat, it's going to end up between here and here. Now, if we line that up just perfectly here, you'll notice that that red bar goes out a distant distance of uh, ME, which stands for the margin of error, uh, below and a distance of a margin of error above. So knowing that we've got a 90% chance of this P hat being between here and here, we've got a, a notice that that red bar always captures the mean as long as P hat is between those two values. If it gets outside of those two values, then it misses the mean. So there's a 10% chance it will either be out here in the upper tail or down here in the lower tail, but there's a 90% chance that we'll be in between here. And so this confidence interval by taking P hat minus ME and P hat plus ME, <coughs> we've got a 90% chance that's gonna, going to, in fact, uh, capture the mean of this. Now you'll need to think through that more than once uh, to get this to, to make sense. But this, uh, we know that not, okay, so this is the, uh, the, the big point is that we're 90% confident that if we take this P hat, which we got from the sample, minus this ME that we explained up here, and that P hat plus that ME, that that interval, we're 90% confident that that interval is going to capture the mean of the population. The, the, the population proportion is going to be within that interval. So here's the challenge. With the clues that have been given, can you find the 90% confidence interval for the proportion of the blue M&Ms given the sample that we started with? There are some real similarities when you start looking at the confidence interval for the mean of one variable. So uh, maybe would, a sample question would be, what is the average distance from uh, the front door to the curb in our community? So here are some, some sample measurements of a very small, convenient sample. Uh, the central limit theorem here says that the mean of the sample means is going to be the same as the mean of the population. And the standard error now is going to be sigma divided by the square root of n. The problem is that, uh, that we don't know the standard deviation of the population. So we'll approximate this value with s divided by the square root of n, uh, where, where of course s is the standard deviation of the, of the sample. Um, We'll need to find a, a critical C value, just like we did before, but we'll need to use a T distribution. And uh, this is going to be one of the objectives of, of this, one of the objectives of this module is that you, you'll be able to do that. Then once again, the margin of error will be calculated. Once we know what that C is, and we know what this standard error is, then we'll just take C times that standard error, and that will give us a margin of error. And then the confidence interval for a, in, in this case, when we're looking for the confidence interval for means, the mean of the population we're, will be 90% confident that it's between these two values, between x bar minus me and x bar plus me. Very analogous to the other one. 
Okay, this overview wasn't meant to teach you all of the details. Those are some of the things that you need to develop and learn as you work through this module. Good luck on it.